people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, mm -hmm. right? And so building rapport isn't just an ends to a, it isn't just a means to an end, right? Mm -hmm. It's not because that's insincere. Correct. And sincerity will bridge that gap between them not knowing you and them trusting you. Welcome to the Sales Wolves Podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Harris. It's on like a pot of neck bones. <laughs> Joseph Caldwell. Neck bones. And we <laughs> are the Sales Wolves. Uh, Got a little bit of something going on here. I can't mm. uh, really howl. It's the last time you had a pot of neck bones. <laughs> <laughs> just came out like it was just a common. I had a coach that said that, like when I was in middle it's school. It's on or like a pot of neck bones. I'm mm -hmm. Not sure if that's good or bad, but that's where we're at. That's, uh, that's this where is we're episode from. 97 of the Sales Wolves Podcast. Thank you for joining us. And in this episode, we're gonna talk to you a little bit about uh, building rapport. You feel and closer to me after I just made you laugh, right? I do. See. Oddly. I just built rapport <laughs> just with built, humor. I just built report. Report. But building trust, um, you know, really is the first part of the sales process uh, once an appointment has been set, at least. Um, and it's probably one of the most overlooked when it comes to actually practice uh, and preparation mm -hmm. um, because there is an art to it. Um, there is a science to it. It is not just something that people, a lot of times people, what people think is, Okay, well, let me, let me learn the scripts. Let me learn uh, all the key questions, the key of how to handle these objections. But, you know, the building the rapport part, oh, yeah, yeah, it's just, you know, conversation. And they can just kind of brush past that. But there are ways that you can actually uh, get better um, mm -hmm. and develop skills in that, in that aspect. So people buy from people they trust. Mm -hmm. And trust is initiated and built in... In, in the, the report. conversation report that you build yeah, yep. on the front end. So that's uh, so if you want people to buy your product, then you'll learn to build rapport. Mm -hmm. And you know, a guy that, that we work with, um, Mike Schless, he had said the other day something that, that really uh, hit me. He said, in that process, in the beginning of, of an appointment, as you are building that relationship and building that trust, what you're doing is you're earning the right to later on in the appointment ask the difficult questions. And so maybe later on in that appointment, you're gonna ask them some uh, stuff about their financial background sure. and you know, what they have in the savings, things that you know, people aren't just typically going out and, and telling strangers. Mm -hmm. So you're earning the right in the beginning to be able to ask those questions later and to have them trust you enough to, to give you that information that you need. Um, and people that just learn the script, they, or they learn their product and they're just information dumpers mm -hmm. um, or they just throw up on people, yeah. I like to say, without ever building that rapport and finding out the needs and wants, likes, dislikes, whatever it is, whatever you're selling. You have to remember this, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, mm -hmm. right? And so building rapport isn't just an ends to a, it isn't just a means to an end, right? Mm -hmm. It's not because that's insincere. Correct. And sincerity will bridge that gap between them not knowing you and them trusting you. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, until they know that you actually care about them, care about their business, care about their finances, care about their livelihood, care about their family, whatever it is, whatever your product revolves around, care about their home, their car, their whatever it is, until they actually know that you sincerely care about them and 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 their future or whatever's going on right there in their life, then they're not gonna, they don't, they don't care how much you know. You may, you may be the smartest person there. You may be the, you may know every single thing about the product, but, uh, but they don't trust you and they don't feel that sincerity, they're not gonna buy from you. And this couldn't be coming at a, at a more perfect time um, for us to put this information out because really right now is when you have to absolutely double, triple down on this because as the market, uh, begins, it's already begun, but as the market corrects, people will continue to do business 
with the people that they trust. 100%. And when they need products and services, they're going to go back to those ones that they do feel like they have actual relationships with. Right. Uh, and when the market is not good, <clears throat> when the economy is not good, and people are a little bit more uh, thoughtful in where they're spending their money, that money's always going to go back to the people that have built that relationship, That's or right. at least proven to them that they care. And I think a lot of that is is being genuine in your curiosity. So being right. genuine when you're asking these questions about them or about their business, not just to check a box that says like I asked them, you know, where they if you're sitting down with a couple, I asked them, you know, wh where they first met or how he proposed just to check a box. Like being like genuinely interested in having that conversation and hearing about these yeah. two and uh, that that tr it um it uh, translates so far different. People can sniff fake Bullshit. report from oh, yeah. report. I keep saying our report. Report from uh, a mile away, and they know when you're just kind of. Have you ever lubricating the conversation? This will this will be very relevant for you. Have you ever changed a dirty diaper, and it smelled good? Like you just got down in there and took a big old whiff and was like, man, now that's good. No. No. That's what people smell on you when you're not sincere. <laughs> and they want to get away from it as fast as yeah. you want to get away from that dirty diaper. Sure. Right? Absolutely. And get it wrapped up in something and get it, yeah. Right? Absolutely. Man. You know what I learned changing dirty diapers? Never, ever bite my fingernails. <laughs> that's, that's a great side lesson. That'll change your life. <laughs> that day will change your life, my friend. <laughs> You change a dirty diaper and accidentally get some money on your fingernail, take a nibble on your fingernail labor <laughs> later, that'll, that'll ruin the day. Uh, that's, that's ter take terrible. Take that one. Take that, enjoy I, that. I will. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, guys, especially for you that are, that are sitting down with business owners, it's so important to be vested in the, like, the interest of their business. Like, yeah. to, to know, like, when you're actually trying to solve a problem with your product, not just trying to figure out, okay, where can I possibly, you know, fit my solution into their need, but actually trying right. to figure out what their real need is. Yeah, their pain. Um, and, and where, yeah, where, where the pain points are, um, what's going on with their business, how can you, uh, how can you help? And, and how can you help might not be, you know, Mr. Co Mr. Prospect, I've got the absolute best way to help with that problem. You see, we've got this product right here and it'll do the yada, 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 yada. Like, yes, ideally that would be great. But helping can be like, man, I understand exactly what you need right here. That's a huge problem that a lot of my, uh, that a lot of our clients deal with. I'm going to connect you with so-and-so, and you may be connecting them with someone else that's completely separate from the business that you're trying to do. Right. But let me connect you with this CPA. They, they work in that area. Um, but, you know, while we're here, you know, I do want to talk to you about this, and I think that it will also help your needs that you have in this area, but not or just seen, solely being focused on what you have to offer. I've seen sales guys go do exactly what you say, like, okay, I see that this is a big problem here, mm -hmm. and refer them to somebody else that can fix that problem. Hey, my solution doesn't fit where you're at until you solve this other problem, sure. and I want to help you get to the person to solve that problem, but my solution fits like six months down the road. Mm -hmm. And instead of trying to ramrod it down their throat, you yeah. just created, you just, you just didn't sell them, but I promise you, you just set yourself up for future money and you just earned some trust, yep. right? And they know, hey, this guy's sincere. Yeah. This guy's trying to do the right thing. And, and that always wins in the end. And it's, it's one of those that can feel, um, if you haven't been doing this from day one, it can feel like it's the, the chicken and egg kind of scenario where you have to have your sales pipeline filled. Mm. You have to have sales you know, lined up in order to feel like you can spend the time to have those types of conversations, to feel like you have the ability to push off business six months down the road. Mm -hmm. But the reality is it's by doing those things that's gonna bring that money and that opportunity to you. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of chicken and egg, but the only thing I can say is that it's just start as soon as possible if you haven't done it that way. Um, because if you haven't been building your business based on relationships, then it takes time to develop those relationships. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't take a 30 minute coffee meeting 
to be able to to be able to build that rapport and trust and then sell a product. These are things that may extend the sales cycle uh, for you, but it will also extend the sustainability of your business long term. Yeah, and uh, repeat sale after sale after sale. Absolutely, and so, so I, I I completely can understand someone sitting here and they're saying, well, yeah, that's great, but you know I've got a quota to meet for December. And that sounds great to be able to build these relationships and spend all this time, but like I need to make some sales now. So you just um, have to meet with a bunch of people because somebody right now has the mm -hmm. problem and they need your solution. They need it right now. Yeah. But you're not you're not getting to that person and you're not building rapport with them and building trust with them where they feel like they can pull the trigger on a one call on a one call close. Yeah. One call closes happen all the time in every industry. Mm -hmm. It happens all the time. And you just have to go through enough numbers to get there, but that's a different talk. That's a work ethic talk. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, it's kind of like you're trading. Do you want a, do you want an okay December or do you want a fantastic February, March, April? Is really what you're trading. Right. Um, and I don't know about you, but I'd rather have a fantastic February, March, April than just a, being able to squeeze an okay December out of just forcing a product down people's throats. It's really good to hear you say that because I've been <laughs> meaning to talk to you about it. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> But guys, invest time on the front end um, with these relationships. Because that's what hey, they I are. was going to tell a story before we shut this yes. thing down. We both know a sales guy that that he was meeting with somebody, and he, he said, "You know, are you married?" And they said, "No, I was engaged, but my my fiance just broke up with me." And what did he say when he when that guy said that? He said, uh, "Great." Great. And then he kept it moved on to the next rolling. question. <laughs> like, like, that's when you go, oh, my God, dude, that's unbelievable. What happened, man? You all right? Yeah. Like, you got to actually take some interest. In if you ask them a question, you're not thinking about what you're going to say next. You're actually thinking about what they're saying. I was, that was, I was sitting there in that, in that meeting. I was actually shadowing the guy. Yeah. And he's like, hey, man, you married? No, I'm not married. He's like, girlfriend or anything like that? He's like, no, no. He's like, actually, I was, you know, engaged, but um, my fiance just um, broke up with me. And he goes, all right, good man. You got any kids? Um, <laughs> you know, and I was sitting there like, I'm like, he didn't hear him. I'm like, he didn't, he didn't hear him. He didn't hear he what didn't he care. said. And mm -hmm. it was just he had his, There's a reason why uh, God gave you one mouth and two ears. That's right. And uh, and that's and that's a, probably a good place to uh, to, to close with uh, to close on, is remembering that when you're having these conversations, that it's more about asking good questions and letting people talk, uh, letting them tell you what they need, letting them tell you um, about their uh, problems that they're having with their business. People love to hear themselves yep. uh, talk. People love to talk about their business. Like asking them questions um, in a way that, that just gets them uh, fired up. Like asking yeah. them like, you know, what was it that first uh, interested you in this business? And you know, what, what was that first year like when you, when you became profitable? And like the people love talking about, you know, the successes that they had. Better make sure they're profitable before you ask that. <laughs> yeah. I'm still not profitable. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. It's over. Do some research before. Thanks Andy's for wild. reminding me. <laughs> That's why you're here. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. All right, guys. Um, so don't be lazy. Don't be lazy, basically. I mean, that's, that's it. You got to build these relationships on the front end. And then relationships take time. But once you've built that trust, man, that is a long term, um, not just customer, but referral source that you'll never, ever, ever um, you know, run out of. So. Yeah, we've grown up in this society where people say, well, this is business, this is personal. Yeah. Well, I'm here to tell you it's all personal mm -hmm. and it's all personal relationships, yeah. period. So, anyway. With I'm that, Joseph Caldwell. This is Tyler Harris. We're sales and, wolves. And we are the sales wolves. <laughs> <laughs> uh,